Well, I'm here at one of my favorite places in Miami. This is History Miami Museum in downtown Miami, where you can come and learn everything about this area of the world, even before people lived here. Then there were the Indians, and now I'm sitting in the pirate section where I have the pleasure of talking to Natan Samuels. He is a graduate student at FIU who is studying science education, but he's also an educator here. Natan, will you come and join me? Hey. So about three weeks ago, I attended a lecture here where Natan talked about Black Caesar, one of the legendary pirates of the Caribbean and Florida. And he used to hang out in Biscayne Bay around Caesars Creek and Elliott Key. So if you ever go boating around there, just keep in mind that there's a lot of history underwater. So I've heard from what you said yes. that Black Caesar used to lie in ambush waiting for the Spanish ships loaded with treasure to come in and grab them. Can you tell us a little bit more about this character? Sure, Black Caesar, um, well, first of all, uh, there's a lot of mythology surrounding uh, him. They're not even sure whether he existed, they're not sure what time period he lived in, but nonetheless, um, they're, they're very sure that there was pirate activity in Elliott Key. Um, they do center the Black Caesar legend around there. Um, one of the things that he's said to have done in terms of lying in wait is uh, the, the keys, especially the upper keys there, are, are perfect spots to wait for uh, sh these ships to uh, go by because they're, if you're talking about Spanish ships, they're coming from Havana, they're sailing up through the Florida Straits, heading up to the Carolinas, getting ready to go home. So that means because they're going on the return trip, they're just laden with all kinds of gold, silver, valuables, food, anything that you could imagine, they've got it in there. Um, Tons the, of booty. Tons of booty. Tons and we're booty. not talking South Beach clubs, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and he was, he had to have been a very uh, novel person because there's not a lot of, there's no mountains or any uh, thing for him to hide the ships behind, so uh, he did things where he would slightly uh, sink the ships a little bit into the water and they would have so many men on board they could quickly pump the water out if they saw a ship coming and then you'd just see this mast rising out of the water and coming to get you. Or they would do things uh, because the Elliot Key is, is based on uh, ancient coral, so they could sort of, instead of having to drop anchor all the way to the bottom of the seafloor, they could actually uh, put hooks and things into the rock and just sort of wait there for ships to come by. As soon as they see one, just unhook the ship and again go after them. Isn't there a, a, something called the Caesar's Rock? Caesar's in, Rock. In that area, if you go boating out there? If you go boating out there, and even if you check some, uh, there's a lot of places on the uh, internet where you can see pictures of these things. Um, and, and it's very easy to imagine them happening, and I'm sure that they did. Now, why would those Spanish ships or other uh, ships, you know, because obviously the Spanish weren't the only to colonize the Caribbean. No. Um, why would they have come into Biscayne Bay? Because there's a lot of shallow water there. I mean, it was pretty treacherous to venture into these waters. You know, it's, some of it is quite shallow run aground very easily. And uh, yeah, it was one of the main problems. They, they didn't know where all the, the reefs are. One thing I talked about uh, in my uh, lecture was that the uh, imperial maps, Spanish, English, French, and so forth, they were notoriously bad at telling their people where the treacherous reefs were. So why were they coming over here? Well, it was just sort of this, um, this process where uh, you know they'd come in from Europe, usually through the uh, Lesser Antilles, sort of underneath uh, Puerto Rico and things like that. They'd land on wherever they held land, if it was Spain, you know, Havana, or Northern South America, and so forth. But then the process was they'd sort of reap the spoils from the Caribbean or Central South America and come up through the Florida Straits. They'd like to go up to uh, up the East Coast, uh, uh, up to basically the Carolinas or, or in Virginia, and then sail back to Europe um, that way. Well, they Mostly take because advantage of, of the Gulf Stream, right? The Gulf Stream and, and different currents right. and, and things like that. Um, Biscayne Bay, um, it, it, it really was very treacherous. And the, what made it even worse, of course, is the climate. During hurricane season, which, you know, it, the same as it is now is the same as it was right. then. Uh, if a storm was coming in, you need to moor your boat. 
So you've got all these boats coming by, a veritable caravan, but as soon as the seas it's get like way too shallow, it was like a traffic jam, they would have to pull Typical in. Typical Miami traffic jam. <laughs> it, absolutely. And, and where, where is there to pull over? There's none of these sort of accident lanes. The accident lanes are these little sort of inlets and keys, which is, once again, exactly where they would have been lying in wait for them. Yeah, so, so it was, it was just uh, tailor made. So if you were a pirate back then, that was an opportunity for you to kind of wait and see what happens. Yeah, it runs a little bit counter to some of the um, popular pirate lore where, you know, they were attacking ships at sea or, or going into towns and raping and pillaging and things like that. And certainly some of that went on, but not as much as is talked about. A lot of what went on was more stuff like this, especially in southern Florida. And it's amazing to me that these journeys were able to take place. I, mean, I used to do a lot of boating in Biscayne Bay. I was a flats fishing person. Uh -huh. So I, I, I know that the map, you know, I was the nautical navigator, um, and it's shallow, but we have depth finders. We have GPS. It's amazing. We, you know, and these people had nothing except celestial navigation and, and these wacky old maps that really weren't accurate. That's absolutely so. But if you are Black Caesar, you see, you basically live in this really small area. So then, just from experience, you know you're your own GPS. You're your own depth finder. You know where all these little things are, these little variable. Uh, sea depths and things like that, and you can use that to your advantage. Whereas these imperial forces, they don't know any of these minutiae at all, none of these details. They just know, oh, it's sort of shallow generally in this area or not. There's a storm coming, let's go in there, and, and so on and so on.